want to start just again by saying thank you to Pastor Joe for allowing me to be up here because um, it's a big responsibility, and I, I appreciate the trust he has in me to be here today. So thank you to him for that. Today, we're going to have some kiddos with us because they're already here. And that's okay. Listen, let your kiddos be kids. They're kids, right? They're not going to be adults. They're going to be kids. They're going to be squirmy. They're going to be loud. I'm not going to notice them. It's going to be good. But what I do know is in kids' church, they have a big idea. So today, um, I want to see if our kids can remember it, but I want to see if they'll quote it back to you parents later. The big idea is simply this. It's not mine. It's not mine. Now, I know you're thinking, but we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer, and you're right, and we're going to continue that today. But today's big idea is it's not mine. See, I don't know about you guys, but I use the map apps. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Whether it's Waze or Google Maps, we, we use all the map apps, right, to get us from point A to point B. Listen, guys, it's okay to admit that we use them because it used to be, I remember back in the day where we'd like pull up the map, read it, like, I got it. And we just go, and then everybody in the car is like, where are we at? We're good. Are we lost? No, we're good. I've seen that gas station five times. Yep, yeah, scenic route. We're good, right? Hey, listen, the app just tells you where to go. You just follow it and go along, right? It's great. Like, if you're like me, most days, um, I just sit back, relax, let's go with the app. Other days, that arrival time means challenge accepted. Let's see who can get there first. Me or you, app, let's go. How many minutes can I knock off this thing? And we just go for it, right? Am I the only one? All right. Well, I'm just confessing to you guys. That's cool. But hey, you know what? A lot of times we get this general idea of where we're going, and we'll take and we'll turn that map off. And if you're like me, I get the general idea, and I get generally in trouble <laughs> because I'm like, oh, I think I missed a turn somewhere. Let me pull over. Let me reset the app. Okay, now let's go from here. Or if, let's be honest. We don't pull over. We just reset the app while we're driving, right? We shouldn't do that, but we do, and we keep going. But I really feel like the way we use our GPS apps on our phone is a lot the way we use the guideline Jesus gave us for prayer. We give us a general idea. We, we, we get the general concept, and we just say, I got this on my own. I'm going to take this myself. I don't, Jesus, I don't need your word right now. I'm just going to do this prayer thing my way. And if you notice like I do when I do that, it typically reverts back to me. God, give me, God, I, God, I, me, 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 I, 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 mine, 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 mine. And I think we miss the concept of what Jesus is doing. He's given us a pattern to pray. Now, we're not trying to teach you to pray word for word, right? Jesus didn't tell the disciples, hey, pray this prayer every time you have a spare minute. This is how you're to pray. He's giving them a roadmap, a pattern of how to pray. We start with, Matthew 6, verse 9 through 13, we'll start with, in the King James Version, verse 9, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're, we start our prayer with praise and thanksgiving, praising God and thanking him for who he is. When we pray, he's saying, when you begin to pray, you need to honor and respect and give thanks to our Father for who he is and for what he's done. And he goes on, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're declaring God's kingdom priority shall be established in our lives. To do this requires complete submission and obedience is required. Pastor said it this way, partial obedience is disobedience. His kingdom, his will, his plan, his way. In the verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is teaching that dependence on God helps us to learn to trust God in every area of our lives. Learning to trust God for the basic necessities of life positions us to trust him for the miraculous. And then we talked about verse 12. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. The most basic truth of Christianity is that Jesus Christ has already paid for all your sins. Forgiveness isn't saying they were right. Forgiveness is freeing me from the hurts of my past and empowering me to live free. I've also heard it said that unforgiveness is like drinking poison, expecting it to hurt the other person. In the last week, Pastor Val talked to us, uh, talked with us about the first half of verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God wants to help us overcome temptation. 
we tend to focus so much on temptation that we fail to see that God has provided a way out. We need to understand that we're going to be tempted, and temptation is not a sin. You understand that? It's not a, tempta- it's not a sin to be tempted. But when we give in to that temptation, that's where the sin is created because we give in, as the Bible says, to our own evil desires to do things contrary to the Word of God. And I don't know if, don't know if you guys know, but temptation is everywhere. Sometimes temptation is right next to you. For instance, I don't know how many of you have siblings, but I have two big brothers. I have the two best big brothers in the world. I'll fight you for both of them. But there was this one time, I know I'm kind of sidetracking, but I think it's funny. There was this one time we're sitting at home, and it's dinner time. I was little. I think I was like, what, four or five, Mom, maybe younger than that. I don't know. I don't know if they remember this or not. I keep telling myself. We're sitting at dinner, and we had mashed potatoes and gravy, and I don't know what else was on the plate. But I remember mashed potatoes and gravy. And I was little. And so I said, I think these will stick to the wall. And what does any good big brother say? I don't know. Why don't you try it and just find out? Temptation is always potentially right next to you at the dinner table. So what did I do? Flink. And let me just tell you, if you want to know if mashed potatoes are good or not, see if they stick to the wall. Don't do that. That's how you know. And they stuck to the wall. And I didn't get in trouble because, Mom, what would you do? They told me to, right? It worked. But temptation is always around us. We have to be cautious that we always have a way out. God says, I've given you a way out. It's your choice to take it. So today, I want to talk about the second half of verse 13. It says this. In the King James Version, it says, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, some of you may read the New Living Translation or a different um, translation of the Bible, and that's totally okay, but you'll notice that in those versions, that part of verse 13 is left out. King James Version, New King James Version still have that phrase in there. Why are we covering it? Because we feel, as, as we're praying over this series, as pastors praying over this series, we kind of talked about it, and we feel that this is a very vital and important part of the prayer that we need to cover and remember as the pattern that Jesus has given us. Right, because our big idea is what? It's not mine. It's not mine, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For yours is the kingdom. The kingdom is his. The kingdom, the earth, the heavens, it's all his. Psalms 24, 1 through 2 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Psalms 50, verse 9 through 12 says, But I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens, for all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains, and I don't know the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine and everything in it. It's his. Haggai 2.8 says, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of heaven's army. See, when I remember that everything I have is his, obedience is much easier. It's not mine. We we should be asking God to help us to hold things loosely. Because some of us in this room hold so tightly to our possessions that God can't move in our heart. But if I will say, Lord, everything I have is yours, it's right here. You take what you want, leave me with what you want me to have. You take what you need, I'll be fine with the rest. Why? Because it's already his. It's not yours. It's not mine. I am to build his kingdom, not mine. I have conversations all the time with, with, with some guys and some people. And my first comment is this. Listen, I'm not here to build my kingdom. I'm not here to be about me. I'm here to build the kingdom of God. We have students, this is one of the funniest things, we have students from, from Excavate that will come for a long time and then all of a sudden we won't see them anymore. And I'll say, hey, where are you at? Maybe we're missing you at Excavate. Oh, I'm going to this church. Man, I'm so glad. I'm so excited to hear that. And they just kind of go, cool. Like they're, they're caught off guard. 
Because people want you to say, no, come to my kingdom, come to my place where I, this is the best. But when we realize it's not about my kingdom, it's not about this church, it's about the kingdom of God. When I want you to go somewhere, I don't care where you go, go somewhere and build the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's his kingdom. Our life priorities should be building, funding, and advancing his kingdom. We just read that he owns everything, all the cattle, all the animals, all the silver, all the gold. Funding the kingdom of God isn't about a badge of honor for how much money I've given. Funding the kingdom of God isn't about just what I can give or what I can do, right? Because he doesn't need my money. He doesn't need your money. We miss that concept a lot of times. We think, well, I'm going to give this, this offering because God needs it. No, he doesn't. He doesn't need any of our money. If I'm not willing to give what is already his, then those things have a hold on me. See, here's the deal. Giving and funding the kingdom isn't about how much will you personally give. Giving and funding the kingdom is about does your money have your heart or does Jesus have your heart? See, in Matthew chapter 19, we read the story of the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you, and I've done all. Jesus said, you got to go obey the Ten Commandments. I've done all those things. I want to follow you. I want to be perfect like you. I want to be good like you. I want to just be your follower. And Jesus says in verse 21, it says, Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Verse 22 says, but when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. What that tells me is the possessions ruled his heart. The possessions were his treasure. Because Jesus said, give it all away. Sell it, give it all away. Then you'll have treasure in heaven. He was more worried about having treasure on earth that won't go anywhere with him. Jesus said, if you'll give everything away, you'll have treasure in heaven. Then you can come follow me. See, so many times we get so focused on, well, I give this or I give that. I Listen, good job. If that's the, the credit you want is a, a hand clap, there you go. There's your hand clap. But can I tell you something? It ain't worth nothing. Because if our possessions hold on to us, if our possessions are so priceful or whatever, we, I got to have the stuff, then we're missing out and we need to have Jesus. Because what I've learned is when I give stuff away, when I say, God, whatever I have is yours, I have a lot more joy in letting things go. I have a lot more joy when I get a ding in the truck. Right? You're like, oh, what? Where'd that didn't come from? I was serving Jesus, and it just happened. Like, I used to be the guy, like, you had to be clean, waxed, inside, outside. Now I got kids. I'm like, whatever. Don't scratch my truck. Now I'm like, Psh, another scratch. Hey, I was serving Jesus that day, and that's what happened, so it's all good. Hey, what happened here? I mean, I was serving Jesus. What happened here? Well, let's not talk about my wife getting in trouble, so it's cool. I'm already in trouble later. Listen, to keep things in perspective, we must understand and focus on the truth that it's his kingdom we're building. Everything that he has blessed us with, it's already his anyways. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Why? It's not mine. It's not mine. Yours is the power. We have to start out by asking God, God, will you help me do this? God, will you help me? God, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. And it quickly turns into, hey, look what I did. See what I did over there? See what I accomplished over there? I got that promotion. I got that raise. I got that new car. I got that new, I got that, I got. When did you become God? When did you become the one that provides everything? Because a couple weeks ago I heard pastors say, we are not the providers for our family. God is. God blesses us with a job. God blesses us with things to provide for us and for our family. He is our provider. So I didn't get anything. But through his power, I did. But we sometimes lose track of that. God, help me. Help me. Give me the, God, give me the power. Give me the bold. Give me the strength. Hey, look what I did. We quickly turn from what God is giving us to what I did. I don't know about you, but I can't make anything happen. When I try to make things happen, I fall flat on my face. And I look like an idiot. But when God orchestrates things and sets things up and I walk in his favor, and I walk understanding it's his power, it's his kingdom, 
then things happen in a new way that I can't do on my own. See, I have to remind myself constantly that there are, there are opportunities and access that I've been given in different places at different times. And I have to, I literally, I don't, I'm, like, I'm not making this up. I sit down almost once a week and remind myself, hey, buddy, you didn't do none of this. Everything you've been given has nothing to do with you. God orchestrated things. God opened doors. You just walked through them. Listen, can I tell you something? If we'll refocus ourselves sometimes and go, hey, God, um, if you'll open doors, I'll just walk through them, and whatever you do from there is cool. Or if not, that's fine too. But whatever you want, I'll follow you. When we understand it's his kingdom and his power, things change. Our perspective changes. John 15, verse 5 in the New King James Version says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, he who dwells, he who lives in me, and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. It's his. It's all his. 2 Corinthians 9, or 12, verse 9 through 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul goes on to say, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may, may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Ephesians 6.10 says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Notice none of those scriptures said anything about me and my strength and my power and my goodness and my whatever. It's all about the Lord and his power and his strength. We have to pray, God, I need your strength today. Again. Again. One more time. Tomorrow, God, I need your strength again. Tuesday, God, it's Tuesday. I need your strength today on Tuesday. Wednesday, God, I need your strength. You get the point. We have to rely and ask and, and live in his power. When we do it on ourselves, it doesn't work that way. I read a comment recently from a student. Um, they were answering a, a little survey, and it said, how often do you pray? How's, your, how's your, your prayer time? And the response was, well, I pray when I need something, or I pray when I'm going through a hard time. That's it. And some of you think, well, that student needs to pray more. Some of y'all need to pray more because we're the same way. You know why our students learn that? Because they watch us. When we only pray at dinner time, at breakfast time, or at lunch time, some of us only pray then. When we only pray we're going through things, guess what they're going to do? But Jesus says, you need to pray always. Always. You know why? Because it's a communication point. Those of us that are married, if we never talk to our wife except for when we want a dinner, we'd be in trouble. And if our wives never talk to us except for when the yard needs to be mowed, we'd be in trouble. Right? We talk, we communicate constantly. Why? Because it builds a relationship. It builds a line of communication where at any given moment I can respond, I can ask, I can always give thanks. Right? But when I only pray when I need something, then I'm relying on my power. When things are going good, God, I'm good. I don't need you. I'm good. Something happens, oh, God, I need you. He's like, you needed me every day, but you just left me alone. We always should be praying. We can't make it if we're not consistently and constantly praying and spending time with Jesus. We have to walk in his power. And the only way we do that is when we spend time with him. Why? It's not mine. It's not my power. It's not my kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the glory. It's his kingdom with his power for his glory. Everything we say and do, everything we accomplish should point to Jesus, not us. Everything. Well, Pastor, I don't agree with that. Okay, well, then you'll read your Bible. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me. But what I'm, what I'm telling you is when we read the Bible, Jesus said, all glory goes to God. Not to you. To God. Not to me. To God. Everything that we do should point people to Jesus. See, it's a hard thing to do in our culture. Our culture focuses on me. Creating a name for myself. My brand. A famous football player used to say, I'm going to get me and mine. I love me some me. We love us some us. Let's be honest. Look at what I've accomplished. Look at what I've done. Look at me. Look, look, me, 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 me. Mine, 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 mine. Jesus said, 
My kingdom is backwards. It's not yours. It's mine. It's God's. It's a hard concept sometimes for us to grasp. My goal, everywhere I go, should be that his name is known, that his name is glorified, and that nobody knows my name. Now, I realize, like, well, that's impossible. It is because people know us. People realize and recognize us. But when they see me coming, they should go, oh, there's that Jesus guy. I know his name, but he's going to represent Jesus. He's going to live for Jesus. He's going to act for Jesus. He's going to talk for Jesus. I know his name, but my name should point people to Jesus. Now, let me just ease your mind. I don't do that all the time either, okay, because we're all human and imperfect and make mistakes. But when my goal is everything I do, even in my weak moments, in those moments, I'm able to push people to Jesus, right? We can't ex- exalt Jesus while we're promoting ourselves. It's impossible. We have to begin praying, God, I want to give you glory instead of me getting credit. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says this, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. When I'm eating barbecue, it better be for Jesus. When I'm eating tacos, it better be for Jesus. When I'm holding conversations, it better be to point people to Jesus. Because it's not my kingdom, it's not my power, and it's not my glory. I want to ask you several questions to maybe help you process, am I about me? Do I love me some me, or do I love me some Jesus? Now, I don't want you to answer out loud because you'll probably be embarrassed like I am when I answer these questions. So just think about them for a second. First question I want to ask you is this. Do I get angry when I don't get proper credit? Do I get angry? Answer yourself honestly and allow the Holy Spirit to speak because, you know what, I read these questions and I was like, ooh, that hurt. Because if you have to get credit, it's about you and not about Jesus. The second question I want to ask you is, do I promote myself, my ideas, my contributions? Well, is your goal to be known or is your goal to make him known? Because if I'm promoting myself and my ideas and my contributions, then I'm promoting me instead of promoting Jesus. How do I respond when someone else is being honored? See, a lot of times what I've noticed is this isn't even about me not getting recognition. It's just about when someone else is being honored, when someone else is being recognized, do I sit back and go, do you know who they are? Do you know what they did? Then it's about you. If I can't be joyful and excited for someone else being honored, then I have a heart issue already. Do I try to remind others of my importance? Well, if it wasn't for me, let's be honest, if it wasn't for a lot of us, Probably a lot more progress, right? But Jesus says, I love you as you are. Now let me take you and create new in you. Let me change you from the inside out. Let me help you grow because while I love you as you are, you got some stuff that needs to change. Let me help you grow in that. It's a constant thing. What's really important, me getting credit or God getting the glory? In conversations, do I remind others about my past victories and successes when they are sharing their victory? I remember being young in youth ministry, and somebody would be talking about, we did this, with oh, yeah, we did this, and we did this. And, and I look back going, just be quiet, dude. Like, it's not a comparison. Comparison is the number one killer of joy. If I have to one-up you, it's about me, not about Jesus. Am I an affirmer of others or a promoter of self? Pretty self-explanatory, right? How do I respond when I'm getting overlooked? A lot of us, that's my promotion. That's my raise. Well, actually, Jesus said it's all his, and he blesses with what we need. Sometimes you not getting what you want is a blessing that you don't know you need. Right? Do I try to impress others with what I've done for God? I just love somebody to Jesus. That's how good I am. We're supposed to all be doing that. You want credit? Okay. If we seek credit on earth, we won't get credit in heaven. Well, what are you saying? 
if you're only worried about credit on earth, you're going to miss the heart of Jesus. And when I get to heaven, he's going to go, you had your credit. You, you told everybody, and they gave you the, the claps that you wanted, and you missed the honor I wanted to give you. How do I react when something makes me look bad? Sometimes we do it to ourselves, right? I'll, I'll never forget a situation I walked through where I did something really dumb, and it was really stupid. And I had to go back, and I had to apologize to a big, huge group of people because I knew that I was a pastor, but yet I was human. And sometimes we can't differentiate the two, the fact that we're all human. And I had to go back and apologize, and I felt dumb. And even to this day, I see people that were in that group message, and I'm like, they think I'm the biggest loser there ever was. Because I get myself focused on what I did that looked dumb instead of the fact that, Jesus, I messed up, but I still went back and I did what you asked me to do. And I apologize. That's all I can do. Their response is on them. If I'm all focused on me, even when I look dumb, it's about me and not about Jesus. See, we need to drop out of the race to impress people and live for his glory and not ours. We're so caught up with impressing everybody else. And we forget about just loving God and giving him the glory that he needs. It's not about me. It's about him. What is? Everything. Everything is about him. Everything we do every single day is about him and him getting glory. First Peter 4.11 says this, If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. And if anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Well, let me ask you, how would your life be different if you lived this part of the prayer? His kingdom, through his power, for his glory. What kind of parent would you be? What kind of leader would you be? What kind of student would you be? What kind of employee would you be? His kingdom, through his power, for his glory. See, this portion of the prayer has the potential to change how you and I interact with people. Because when we understand our interactions are for his kingdom, through his power, for his glory, we tend to have a lot more grace for people that are different, a lot more grace for people who push our buttons. We look a lot more like Jesus. Why? It's not mine. It's not my power, not my kingdom, not my glory. It's all his. Matthew 6, 9 through 13 says this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the pattern of prayer that Jesus set out for us. To follow, to give God credit, God gives back to us, and we point everything once again back to him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Again, Lord, just the chance to be in your house, to be in your presence, to be here with you. Would you let us, again, hear your voice? And as you speak, would you challenge us to stop being comfortable, but to allow you, as we follow this pattern that Jesus gave us to pray, to spend time with you, as we follow this pattern, would you let it, begin to change our hearts, begin to change our mindset, our attitudes, so that we'd understand it's your kingdom through your power for your glory. Let us today point everything back to you. You've blessed us in so many ways. We, we don't have time to stop and count all the blessings you've given us. But Lord, today some of us need to be reminded just how blessed we are. Even though our, my blessings don't look like somebody else's blessings, I'm blessed. You've taken care of us. So today, would you remind us you've been good to us, but we need to give you the glory and the honor because it's yours. It's not mine. It's not ours. It's yours. Thank you for what you've done for us. Church, can I ask you this morning just to keep your head bowed and your eyes closed for just a second?
I want to ask you two quick questions. Number one is this. Are you here this morning and you say, Pastor Jason, my life has been all about me. I do what I want to do. I don't take orders from anybody. It's my life. It's me, mine. I want to get mine. I'm going to do what I want to do. Because I've never invited Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. But this morning, there's something in my heart, there's something in my in my mind that I realize I need Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. The missing link in my life is Jesus. If that's you, can I invite you just to real quick raise your hand and put it back down. Nobody's looking around except for me, you, and Jesus. Cool. Cool. Maybe this morning you would say, oh, Pastor Jason, I've allowed things to get in the way of serving Jesus. Not just in this building, not just in the ministries our church has, but just serving Jesus in my day-to-day life. And today I need to declare and remind myself, Lord, it's not mine. It's yours. And everything I have is yours. I give it back to you to do what you want to. Is that you this morning? about you, but it does me good to be reminded that what I have is not mine. It's all God's, and he's blessed me. He's blessed us. We're blessed. I want to pray real quick for those that raise their hands, and it will it will be dismissed, but I want to pray real quick. Can I challenge you, church? As I'm praying, would you would you also just Thank God for the way he's taking care of you. And give him a little bit more glory this morning. More praise. Because, man, if you're like me, I don't give him enough glory. I don't give him enough praise. So as we pray, can we do that together as well? Just right where you're sitting, Lord, thank you today. God, thank you for those that raised their hand, those that said, I haven't fully submitted to you. I haven't invited you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. And this morning, would you hear their heart's prayer and their heart's cry that Jesus, it's time for you to take over so that my life would be for your kingdom, through your power, for your glory. Everything that I do would go back to you. Lord, I pray that this morning you would help us, each one of us, to constantly be reminded it's your glory. The jobs we have, the cars we have, the homes we live in, you blessed us with our families. You've blessed us with everything we have. No matter how big or how small, you've blessed us. And Lord, we want our prayer today to be, it's yours. If you see fit to take something, then take it. If you see fit to give something, then give it, because I'll give it, I'll use it to give you glory. Lord, let everything we do, let everything we put our hands to, give you glory. Every conversation we have, give you glory. God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for blessing us and taking care of us. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a video or a live stream. And please share this video with your friends and family. If this message has encouraged you today, please let us know in the comments as we would love to connect with you. And thank you so much for your generosity. Because of you and your faithful giving, together we share the gospel around the world. So please visit our website, crumbcc.church, and use the giving link. God bless you. We can't wait to worship with you again next week.